Welcome to this video. Today I will be reviewing for you a Asian beauty brand that to me is completely unknown. I have never seen anybody talking about these palettes. I have only seen them on the Look Healthy store website and this is the Vivian Dong brand. Never heard of them but the brand has three six pan palettes. All of them are shimmer, so you will not find a single matte eyeshadow in here. And I have all three, I think there are only three of them. If there is a fourth one, I'll link it down below, but I think it's only three. And um, today I will be creating looks with each of these palettes, and then I will give you my final thoughts. This look here that I'm wearing right now for this intro is actually the first one, and that is done with the thorn. Please keep in mind that these are translated by a Google translator here on the back and by what it says on the Look Healthy Store website. Some of these translations might not be right, but I double checked with the website, so I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Please, please, please bear with me with that. But this palette they all come in six pan versions, by the way. This is mainly bluish lilac purple, and even that one down here that to my eye appears mainly brassy golden, this has beautiful pink and purple specks throughout. All of these shades are magnetic, so that palette is magnetic and you can take them out, put them in something else, or just mix and match as you go, but I personally would never, although these do not have names. When you look at the swatches of Thorn, um, you just see a purple vibe. That's it, it's a purple vibe. And here in the phone video, this is done with my phone in flash, you just see how beautiful and sparkly and just how pretty they are. Palette number two is I think called Enchantress. And this has a bit of a different vibe. This is more yellow, reddish, purple, warm kind of. And as you can see in the swatches, I think some of these shades, at least to my eye, appear very similar. And even here in the phone video with Flash, I think there is not a lot of difference between them, but at the end, we will see how they will perform on the eye. And last but not least, we have Optical Chameleon. This is, by the way, also the most expensive one of those, and it has the least amount of product. So each of these, as said, has six pans, and these two, Enchantress and Thorn, come with 10 grams. That means each pan has about 1.5 gram, or if you wanna have it on point, it's 1.6 period, six gram. The Optical Chameleon one has only six grams, so here are only one gram per pan. And that is mainly for the fact that this is one of those very, very translucent, shifty, duo and multi-chrome type. They have a complete different formulation. They feel very, very squishy, at least to the touch when I swatch them. And as you can tell here on the photo, they all have quite a sheer base and even here in the phone video with flash it's just they appear and then they don't and I personally really like that because I love shades that are just doing this. As said, you can get all three of them on lookhealthystore.com. They do ship worldwide with no taxes, no shipping costs whatsoever. And if you want to save some money, you can use my code Allogram for 12% off. And now um, I'd say let's just hop into the looks. As said, one look with each palette. And actually for this one with Thorn, I managed to use all six of the shimmers in here. That's probably a first time for me. So let's see what I can do. And at the end, I will of course give you a review on these palettes if they're worth it or not. And I just uh, remembered before we had known to the tutorial, I said I forgot to tell you the prices. So Thorn is 25 euro. Enchantress is also 25 euro and here is what I meant and honestly I, I, I was a bit hesitant whether or whether or not I, I this is definitely worth it but I will see it in the reviews. This Optic Chameleon one is 75 euro so it's triple the price so I'm expecting triple the beauty honestly. But now for real let's head into the tutorials. 
Okay, the first demo will be with the Thorn palette, and since all of these shades are very much lilac-y and purple, I decided to pair it actually with the Colourpop Aurora Struck palette. If you saw my Colourpop ranking, you know that Aurora Struck is my favorite out of the permanent line. And I'm starting with the shade uh, Geomagnetic, and I run this through my crease. And since I use such a fluffy brush, it doubles as my transition color. I now go into Ionosphere, which is a black anthracite color. And I apply this in the outer lid and outer crease part. And I take it to the center of the crease. And I now tap into the shade No Sleep. And that one I blend here on the inner crease part bringing it to the center. I applied a thin layer of glitter glue and now I'm going in with that very holographic looking purple shade down here. I tap this carefully on the outer, yeah, outer third I'd say. Outer third is a good way to work. Although there is glitter glue, a lot of fallout, glitter fallout specifically, but you know, I'm a big fan of doing eyes before the face, so it doesn't bother me. I now go into that blue here in the center of the first row, and I tap this on the lid, but I'm leaving like the inner third bare, so I basically just tap this here in the center. I now tap into that light purple here in the first row, and I use this now to fill in the rest of the lid. So on the lower lash line, I'm now going in with Orca. And I press this in the lower lash line, connect it with the upper lid. And then I just swipe it inwards, but I try to leave the inner part bare. And I then go into Geomagnetic again. And I start to blend this beginning in the center, and then I go outwards with it. I now go into that middle golden shade here that actually it, it kind of seems a bit misplaced in this palette and it is also the one that is the most crumbly and the hardest to pick up and I try to gracefully as possible apply this on the inner lower lash part. That will do it. I take that back. It's not misplaced. It just looks very golden, pink golden in the pan, but it turns into something very, very pretty with a slight pinky shift. But as said, it's super flaky and crumbly here in the pan, and I, I'm not a fan of it because it just takes a bit more effort to make it work. I now tap into that first shade here. And that one I use as my inner corner highlight. And here we have the first finished look with the Vivian Dawn Thorn palette. And I just once again realized I have not applied a brow bone highlight. So to make it complete and to just break the scheme a bit, I'm gonna use this quite dark one as a brow bone highlight. I very, very gently tap the brush in so that I have barely no pigment on. And now I'm... Um, very, very light-handed, dust this on, and it works, nice. Wow, this looks like a perfect oil spill shade, and you know me, I love my oil spills. So, mini review on this first look and first palette, I really enjoy the look. The mattes definitely just give it a frame, I, I just want to have these uh, these shades to shine on their very best. Not a fan so far of some of the formulations in here, especially this and uh, this one. They are quite flaky and a, a little bit like too dry. I feel like there is a bit of binding component missing while in one of the other palettes, I think it was the Optical Chameleon one. When I swatched them, there was a bit too much binding component, but we will see how they will appear on the eye. Uh, by the way, on my lips, I think I didn't say it, I'm wearing no lip liner at all. I just apply the Ritual Defee Enchanted Lip Sheer in the shade Black Lotus. It's a bit patchy, isn't it? 
but it could be my lips they're very very dry I'm still recovering from being sick so let's head over now to look number two with the I think Enchantress is the next one so look number two is with the Enchantress palette and I will combine this with another palette from my chopping block. This is the ABH Nouveau palette. It's mainly on the chopping block because I, I, I feel very, very disturbed by that purple. I don't want to include this today, but I think that the vibes of Nouveau match this vibe here. So I'm starting with the shade Fleur and dust this here in the transition area. Now go into Liberty, apply this on the crease and outer third. And I take it about to the center, but not all the way in. Because for that, I go into Metro and that one I use to deepen the inner crease part. And then I swipe it outwards on top of Liberty. And if you're like me and you did not work precise enough, I go in with Fleur all over the transition area to soften everything. I also use a bit of that Paloma shade, that very, very light one, directly between the collar and the brows because I feel like I took it a bit too far up. I applied a thin layer of glitter glue and now I tap into that center shade here in the second row. And I apply this on the outer half of the lid. That shade is definitely less opaque than I thought it will be. I now go into that rusty shade here on top of it. And that one I apply on the rest of the lid. I'm not feeling liner today, so I go right into Liberty. And I smudge this across my lower lash line. And then I also, of course, go into Fleur and I use this to soften everything. And just to incorporate some more colors of this palette, I go into that greeny shade up here. Tap and smudge this also on the lower lash line. Bring it slightly inwards, you know, like those elongated uh, liners here. And for the inner corner, I go into that pinky shade up here and apply this as set as inner corner highlight. And then I connect it with that greeny shimmer shade on the lower lash line. And here we have now the finished look. On the lips, I am wearing a lip liner. I, I forgot to check. Um, I'm wearing Super Size Me from Shovel Tilbury and I topped it off with the Pillow Talk Fair Kissing Lipstick. I was not sure during the look how much I will end up liking it, but honestly, I do like it a lot because the shimmers, they are, they are kind of shifty in a way that makes it look like it, it has to be like this, like this is this is supposed to be a pink to, to dirty green look, but with a slight bit of teal going on in that outer part, then together with the pink inner corner, really like that. And formula wise, the Enchantress palette is a bit better than the Thorn palette because Thorn, we had those very crumbly shades. In this one, I mean, I haven't used uh, these, no, these two I haven't used, um, they they didn't swatch crumbly. So I assume that they also won't apply crumbly. And now let's move on to the last look of this video with Optical Chameleon. Okay, for the last look, we're using the Optical Chameleon one. I have no clue if that is the right translation of it, but it's as on the lookout, there's the website. And since all of these shades are more soft, more ethereal, duochrome looking, I pull in a matte working shades. <laughs> oh God, sorry, it's early. Um, I pull in a palette that has some more soft but colorful uh, mattes. Uh, it's the Odin's Eye Hey Reindeer palette. Also a palette that's on my chopping block, but I'm specifically eyeing like these pink mauve tones with a bit of the blues and maybe some of that darker red here and then we see how it goes. I start with the shade Reindeer and on a super duper fluffy brush this goes in the transition area. Not too precise, just 
fluff it on here somehow. Hey, reindeer is on my chopping block because I feel like and I just... The palettes, especially the Christmas palettes from last year, they are so weak. They are not what I like to see from Odin's eye. Um, and to be honest, the last time I saw what I want to see from Odin's eye for real were the first palettes that I bought, uh, which were the Christmas palettes of 2022. And uh, the Halloween collection from last year, the Halloween, that was Halloween. That was awesome too, but these, they're not, they're just not it. But I want to give them some love. So now go into the shade, what's it called? Greetings. And I start to apply this in the crease, starting in the center, bringing it inwards and then slightly fluff it out. And then I tap into Holly. I apply this on the outer crease part a bit in the outer V but I just mix it with greetings now. I wanna keep it more on the ethereal side, so no deepening shades. I go now into that one, and if you remember from the intro, this is the most expensive one. This retails for 75 euros, so that's a whole lot of money, and I'm going into this shade here, and I apply this on the outer part basically where the blue is i go into this shade up here that looks a bit like pisces from the adapt x amy loves and regal from cleonad i use this on the inner part of the lid okay but it does not apply like pisces it just looks like that in the pen and maybe, once again, you in the camera here saw it completely different because that's the tricky part of duo and multichromes. What I see in real life is sometimes not what the camera is picking up at the end. Maybe that one looks more like Pisces. I don't know. Maybe I just want something to look like this because it's a beautiful color combo. I get it why this palette is so much more expensive than the other two. The quality the way they apply, the way they look most certainly, is absolutely outstanding. I want to stay in the more soft vibe, so for a lower lash line, I'm starting with the Colourpop BFF Cream Gel Liner in the shade Calabasas. It is a very light pink, and I line the lower waterline with that. It's a metallic pink. I now go into the shade, yeah, I go into greetings and I blend this across the lower lash line. I now go into that upper shade here and I apply this on the inner corner and smudge it on the lower lash line a bit. And here we have now the finished look. For the lips, I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Crazy in Love lip liner, filled in the complete lip, and then I topped it off with Hourglass Phantom Blossom Bomb in the shade Rise, and I also added a brow bone highlight, this time different to the inner corner. I used that shade up here. So for this look, I did not use these two yeah, the, just these two shades. I hate that I have to say this because I didn't want to, but honestly, from application, the way it appears on the eyes, the way it shifts and looks and also makes me feel, honestly, the Optica Chameleon one is my favorite. It is also the one that's the most expensive. And that's actually a bit sad because I really thought I maybe can uh, recommend you one of the other two because there are only like 25, but this 75, that's a lot. But if you want to grab one and you don't want to spend that much money on it and you want to grab either the in, uh, the Thorn or the Enchantress, honestly, it depends on what do you like. If you are very into earthy tones, soft greens, a little bit of gold and warm shifts, definitely go with Enchantress. It's my least favorite, but you know, I'm not into those. But if you like more intense blues, purples, and for upcoming winter or fall looks, I think the Thorn one is definitely giving it to you. And my favorite is the Optica Chameleon. I'm sorry, it's the most expensive, I know. But you can save 12% with my code uh, Allogram on each of them. 
I do want to point out though that this one in terms of quality, like formulation of the shades, is my least favorite because most of them are quite crumbly while Enchantress one is a bit more consistent in the formulation and with the Optica Chameleon one some of these are like squishy but not squishy and flaky to a level like the Odin's Eye ones, the two from the Lost Singles collection that were very very squishy. That's it, here you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which one is your favorite, which one would you like to pick up if you can choose or do you even want to pick them up? Have you heard of them? So many questions unanswered here. Thank you so much. Make sure you're subscribed. And again, don't forget, if you want to have these, I have a code with Look Healthy Store. It's all with the links in the description box down below. Thank you, and I'll be back to see you next one.